As my boy Elon Musk once said, The most common error of a smart engineer is to optimize a thing that should not exist. I think that's the case with e-bikes. Don't get me wrong, having electric help on a mountain bike is awesome. But uh, I think this is just not the right way of doing it. So, what's the perfect e-bike? To me, it's a steel hardtail with modern geometry. Why? Because they are fast, fun, agile and super versatile. 150mm of travel, 29 inch wheel and plenty of bottle cage mounts. That's a bit too much? Ok, perfect. Wait a second, that's not an e-bike. Well, Johnny, you are right. We need to design a motor for it. So I hopped into Fusion 360 and started designing a frame to hold this powerful hub motor. By the way, kindly provided by PSW Power. The motor will be mounted in the center of the bike with a chain connecting it to the cranks. And most importantly, it will be easily removable just by unscrewing three bolts. This will make this bike arguably the most versatile in the world. You want a bike park shredder? Maybe an electric enduro machine or a zippy trail bike. Maybe even an electric door jumper. Yeah, the last one uh, isn't ideal, but uh, anyway, that's pretty cool. I designed all the parts needed using a cool process called generative design, which is basically some uh, AI magic that uh, autonomously creates these awesome organic looking parts based uh, on the forces that the component will have to withstand. I then got them 3D printed out of steel by my friends at PCBWay. Huge thank you to them. While waiting for the parts to arrive, I attached this 14 tooth sprocket to the side of the motor by drilling and tapping a few holes. I also welded the second chain ring to the one uh, already existing so that I will be able to run a chain from the motor to the cranks. I also purchased the battery, which uh, is uh, a 36 volt 10.5 ampere hour pack, and uh, also the controller, which is a VESC that uh, I then waterproofed with some silicone. It's pretty much finished, I just have to attach the, the throttle and the mounts to the mountain bike. Yeah, let's do that and uh, hopefully it works. As I said, the motor mounts to the bike with three bolts screwed into some 3D printed mounts. The battery can be mounted inside the bottle cage. Wow, that's perfect. So, as you can see I mounted the chain tensioner. Unfortunately, off camera I tried to spin the motor when uh, the chain was a bit too tight. And uh, as you can see, the plastic part broke uh, and I have to print uh, another one from scratch and uh, let's hope uh, it will work uh, if it doesn't uh, I'll have to order a new one 3d printed out of out of steel uh, as the other two pieces uh, that I ordered from PCB way I ended up getting the part made out of steel which brought the cool factor to 11 as a side effect also I redesigned the chain tensioner by adding a sprig to it and uh, while I had the bike on the stand, uh, I just casually swapped my chip forks with some uh, beautiful RockShox lyrics. By the way, they work fantastically well, highly recommended. And with that, perfection was reached. Just have to see if it works. So, I'm here testing the bike uh, for the first time. Well, not the bike, the motor, because uh, I already took the bike uh, to my local bike park without the motor attached and uh, it performed uh, very, very well. Anyway, the motor, it's uh, super powerful. I've set it to 500 watts, but uh, it seems that uh, the motor itself uh, has uh, a controller inside of it that limits it to 250 watts. As you can see I have a throttle here on the left side. This uh, is uh, how fast I'm going without the throttle. As you can see as soon uh, as I press it uh, the motor helps me a very very good amount. Which is very pleasant to see. Also as you can hear it's uh, 
basically silent it makes uh, as much noise as the tire this is me pedaling without the motor on this is me with the motor on there's a uh, not very much difference i think this bike could be compared to maybe a track fuel exe or a norbea rise some of these kind of bikes which are lightweight e-bikes trail oriented but uh, the good thing about this is that you can adjust unscrew three bolts these ones one two and three you can remove the battery just by sliding it out of the bottle cage and uh, you end up with uh, a completely standard uh, steel hardtail that you can uh, take to the bike park with no problem as i did uh, last weekend it performed uh, very 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 nicely i didn't expect it uh, to do so well especially considering that before this bike uh, i had uh, a full suspension with uh, 140 mm travel back and 150 front. The geometry is spot on for me. The reach is feels good, even though it's quite long. At, if I remember correctly, 520 mm in this size, which is comparable to an extra large. I based the geometry around the Kona Honzo EST, which I heard being a very, very, a very nice bike. The battery, I already tested the range in those three climbs that I did and it was able to last uh, this uh, as I said earlier is a 350 watt hours battery 36 volts and uh, as you can see I started all the way down there it's about 500 meters of elevation and I was able to do this climb on one single battery three times uh, exactly this is one of the steepest climb that uh, are uh, present here in this area and as you can see I'm going uh, up it uh, with absolutely no problem very very easy another good thing uh, about this bike is that uh, I had the geometry as I said based uh, on the Kona Honzo ESD and uh, the seat angle on this bike is 77.5 uh, degrees which puts you very far forward and together with the 60 degrees uh, sorry 63 degrees head angle is basically impossible to loop out on any incline one thing uh, that i will definitely add to this bike i think i'll do it in my next video is uh, adding pedal assist and uh, i didn't do that uh, in this video because uh, i have to completely change uh, my cranks by adding a free wheel right here so that the these sprockets can freely spin uh, relative to the cranks and the cranks can stay steady i will do that uh, in my i think in my next video yeah the problem is the throttle because it's very tiring keeping it pressed down always uh, every time and uh, my thumb actually starts to hurt so i have to add uh, some kind of a pedal assist that uh, so that the motor starts spinning when i start to move the pedals oh it's time to answer the final question is this bike the best bike in the world i obviously can't tell you that and uh, the perfect bike is uh, unique for uh, every one of us but uh, speaking of me i think this is really the best bike i could uh, i could have built and uh, i could have uh, bought in general why you may ask because uh, the trails uh, that i have here uh, in my local area aren't uh, so rough uh, and uh, technical to require a full suspension uh, this hardtail without the motor if you remove the battery and uh, and the motor it is uh, very light and agile Oost. yeah it was a small burp as i said as i was saying this bike uh, removing the motor and the battery is a uh, pretty light for a steel hardtail at a uh, measured 14 kilos yeah that's uh, arguably light or heavy depending on uh, 
who you speak to, the important things uh, are that uh, it is very agile going downhill, super, super stable thanks to the 63 degrees head angle. It actually climbs fantastically well thanks to the 77.5 degrees seat tube angle. The chainstay, as you can see, is very short, making it super, super agile. Even with the motor on, which adds about 5 kilos, 3 kilos the motor and 2 kilos the battery. The bike remains uh, very agile and uh, responsive. As I said, I took this bike to the bike park last weekend and uh, I removed the motor and the battery, which uh, to me is what makes this bike uh, very unique and uh, basically the best bike I could have ever bought. Yeah, I think I said everything about this bike. It's basically the perfect bike for me. It's a hardtail, a good geometry. It has a motor, removable, if you want. Uh, to change uh, how the bike feels, so if you want to, uh, to take it to the bike park uh, every now and then, you can do it by removing the motor. 150 mm of travel, it's not too much, it's not too little. It has good brakes, 29 inch wheel uh, roll over everything. I'm uh, a big guy, so I think 27.5 are a bit too small. I might want to change the dropper because as you can see, it uh, sticks out quite a bit even uh, if it's all the way down. It's uh, 175, but this bike could easily house a 240 or even more if they exist, I don't even know. The suspension honestly feels completely amazing, it completely changes uh, how my bike feels, but yeah. I'm very very pleased with this bike, as I said, I have to change the cranks and the sprocket with a 2000 freewheel. By the way, I found some uh, trials uh, cranks which have the, the thread to house a free wheel I think I'm gonna use some of them anyway I think I said all about this bike let's now enjoy the descent yeah remember that the burp my rear tire is basically flat I'm gonna have to ride a bit softer Yeah, this isn't a trail to do on a hardtail with a flat rear tire. Completely flat rear tire. So, even though I nearly had a flat tire and the trail was super muddy, I safely made it home and uh, yeah, that's it for this video.